Hello and welcome back. Let's be honest, network attached storage has changed a lot over the last few years. I remember five, six years ago when I was kind of really taking it seriously, just this main focus towards network attached storage and not just general storage. The rules were fairly straightforward. Most of the brands had a two bay, maybe a one bay as well, a four bay, an eight bay, and then they went rack mount. And that was it, that was your lot. They had that, and then after a few years of that kind of dynamic, a lot of users were kind of like, well, I like these, but some of them are just too expensive. I want a budget version. I hate seagulls. Some people like, you know, liked what they saw there, but they wanted something more powerful, but at the same capacity level. Some people wanted the capacity, but weaker. Whatever way you looked at it, that kind of staple selection of solutions wasn't cutting it. So the brand started diversifying. They started flexing their muscles a bit, fleshing out the portfolio. We started seeing more instances and more hardware customized versions. And from that, the usual dynamic of one, two, four, um, eight and rack mount solutions started becoming blurred. And into that field, we started seeing six bay solutions, three bay solutions, 12 bay solutions. We started seeing solutions that would either prioritize more towards power than capacity or vice versa, an enormous amount of capacity with a little bit of power. And it's in that spirit of things at the start of 2022 where this video exists. This is about what are the best solutions for those of you looking between the cracks of those other mainstays. What is the best six bay, five bay, RAID 6 optimized solution to buy at the start of 2022. If you think of the subject of network attached storage as very uh, as a niche area of computers, trust me, these are the solutions that are niche within a niche within a niche. These are incredibly unique solutions compared to the rest of the demographic and if you are someone who is looking at a NAS server, whether it's because you're moving away from cloud services or you've got suddenly realized you've got too much data scattered around and need it in one place or something that works with the cloud, but you have a very unique setup and unique set of requirements to your needs. One of these three solutions is almost certainly going to be the one that fits the bill for you. Now, even though this is a niche subject, even though these are considered to be very fringe solutions, there's still a lot in the market, hundreds in fact. So in order to narrow this down to just the three solutions that I recommend the most, the best of the best of the niche of the niche, we gotta have some rules. So first and foremost, these are all solutions that are currently available to buy at the start of 2022. Now, if you're watching this in summer of 2022, there may be other solutions out there that I couldn't possibly know about. So do use the links in the description over to NAS Compares to find out what's changed in the hardware industry as I stay on top of this subject constantly. I would argue more than most people. Also, all of the solutions that I talk about today have to be fully fledged and 100% um, supportive of the entire range of solutions, be that in software, tools, services, whatever, from their respective brands. I'm not going to look at any solution that doesn't have support of the entire range of applications from that brand. Because all too often, do you hear big, big words from the brands and you buy the solution and then they go, oh yeah, we do all that stuff, but not on that one. Not on that, that's way too weak. These solutions have to support the entire gamut of applications, services, and tools from the brand. That's got to include mobile apps. That's got to include desktop apps. It's got to support all web browsers. It's got to be accessible on Mac, on Windows, on and, uh, Android, on Linux, on Ubuntu, on Prancer, on Dancer, you name it, the lot. It's got to have multi-tiered backups. It's got to have virtual machine support. It's got to have surveillance support. It's got to have snapshot support. It's got to have container support. It's got to have all of those applications included in the price there for you, including a few camera licenses. It's got to support 20 TBs. It's got to have a mixture of media types because all of these quirky ones do. They've got to synchronize with Office 365, Google Workspace, the works. These are solutions that should do everything that the brand promise. That narrows it down, but still not perfectly. After this, I've got to use my experience. I've got to use the reviews. I've got to look at what I've learned from these brands to narrow it down. So let's crack on with our best solutions. Now for me, the best right now at the start of 22 of these fringe solutions that fill the gaps, 
Hands down, it's the TS364. This is the three slash five bay solution from QNAP. This isn't their first three slash five bay solution. This is actually their third or fourth generation. Now, when QNAP was looking at the portfolio of one, two, um, four and eight bay solutions and looking to slide them in between, they've gone for six bays and 12 bays, but they were the very first to introduce a three hard drive solution. This allows you users that are looking at two bays and going i'm not entirely convinced that's enough storage for me but then i've looked at four bays where brands start adding on features they don't really want to use and then paying extra for and gone well that's not that's too much for me this three bay sits so beautifully in the middle and after a few years of refining the dynamic of what they include within the architecture of the chipset is by far the best out there also it was only released about a month um, before the end of 2021 so it's one of the newest solutions i would say out there as well so the ts364 is uh, supports three hard drives of up to 20 tb each that's a potential 60 terabytes without your raid config but it's also got two nvme ssd bays inside so again mixture of media there that can be utilized for caching can be used for tiered storage where data is moved onto the most appropriate storage media based on how the data is accessed by end users or as its own raw storage pool. So that's one RAID 5 RAID storage pool here of hard drives and one RAID 1 or RAID 0 SSD pool there. A great combination. And this is a system that also features 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. It also supports USB 3.2 Gen 2, the 10 gigabit external connection. And it has, with all of this in mind, although it has a quite, quite quirky external chassis, it has to be said, that it knocks around for about 350 to 400 dollars it's by far the most affordable solution on this list by a factor you know, i would say about 30 percent cheaper i'm oh, sorry i'm um, 30 percent of the price of some of the other solutions i'm going to talk about it certainly arrives with the architecture of a lot of modern four bays but not the heart the price with where they start at around the 500 to 550 dollar bracket this is a great little entry slipping neatly into two and four bay prosumer solutions and it's the best example of what they've been doing with this architecture in years Next up, I want to look at one of the best six bay solutions out there that has been tailored not only towards business users, but also prosumer users as well. Arguably, it's the most expensive solution on this list. However, it is a solution that, from Synology of all brands out there, includes a lot more hardware options than the company generally do. They're a brand that focus a lot more on the software. But in this case, with the Synology DS1621XS+, Plus. It is a solution that ticks a lot of boxes for a lot of different kinds of users and is by far the most powerful 6-bay the brand has ever produced. This quad-core Xeon-powered processor, the Xeon D1531, is a 2.2 gigahertz processor that also arrives with 8 gig of DDR4 ECC memory. And that 8 gig can be upgraded up to 32 gigabytes as well. It's also 10 GBE equipped. It's got 10 gigabit Ethernet there, which is going to be great when you want to saturate it with those six bays there. It's a lovely middle ground between them. The price tag seems a little aggressive, it has to be said, for this six bay, but it does arrive with five years of manufacturer's warranty. It also arrives with a PCIe Gen 3 times eight upgrade slot for adding a dual port 10 GBE card, for adding additional SSD bays, but of course it has M2 SSD bays on board. You can even look into Fiber channel cards, if you want to look at some of that with uh, some of that iSCSI stuff there for remote level access natively. And again, you can populate those bays with either 20 TB drives, giving you up to a potential 120 terabytes of storage outside of your RAID. So that's 100 terabytes in RAID 5 or 80 terabytes in RAID 6, which is uh, lovely stuff. On top of that, the system also arrives with those M2 bays for caching to improve capacity and performance as well inside. Synology have kind of gone down this route recently with regards to first prior party priorities on a lot of their stuff such as storage media and PCIe upgrades but this system still for me is one of the best examples of Synology giving good hardware and good software together. There are better Xeons out there and arguably the more powerful six bays out there but this at its price point and its package of around um, again $1,400 a little bit above a little bit below depending on where you're looking in the world is a great 
six bay mid solution between the four and the eight bays that really ticks a lot of boxes for prosumers and business users. And finally, we can look at what I think might be, when I first saw it, one of the weirdest solutions that, f the first time I saw it, I was like, weird. So, you know, when I looked at it again, a minute or so later, I went, oh, I kind of see what they're going from. And then it went on to being one of the most unsung, underrated, best solutions of 2020. And moving into 2021, it started finally getting the recognition it deserved. And now, at the start of 2022, it is going to be a solution that if you get it, you will not regret it because arriving at a lower price point than the Synology we just talked about, the TSH973AX is one of the most unique niche within a niche NASs I have seen in like five years. And it's one of those NASs I think that's going to stick around for a long time time because it's just so good now the h973ax knocks around for about 1100 to about 1200 dollars so similar to that technology price point there so what makes this in any way preferable well it's got five hard drive bays so again 100 terabytes of potential in unconfigured RAID, 80 terabytes in a RAID 5, 60 terabytes in a RAID 6, but it also has two SATA SSD bays there as well. And it also has two U2 or U.2 NVMe bays at Gen 3 times 4. So that is a potential nine bays of storage. This is a 5 slash 7 slash 9 bay storage device. You can combine all of that if you choose. You can choose to have three independent storage areas. You can use one of those SSD tiers for caching and another one for a ridiculously fast storage pool. What about access, I hear you ask? Well, this has 10 gig of Ethernet on board. It's also got two 2.5 GBE ports as well, as well. So a potential 15 gigabytes, sorry, gigabit of um, connectivity there on the table. So again, that is pretty impressive. That's um, 1,500 megabytes per second of potential connectivity between this device and your network over link aggregation or multiple connected users. Again, it has USB 3.2 Gen 2, just like a lot of QNAP solutions, but this system, which also features ZFS, by the way, is just an impressive mix of so many different kinds of technology and its scalability and its future-proofing, particular at that price point, a price point, by the way, which I think is only gonna be, get becoming, be becoming cheaper, is just a great mix of different kinds of uh, modern architecture of storage in a network attached storage device. This combined with that internal processor there, which is a embedded Ryzen quad core 2.2 gigahertz processor that arrives with eight gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded up to 32 gigabytes of memory then. And there's no restrictions by the brand. You can go Corsair, you can go Crucial, you can do it you want. This system is enormously expandable, enormously external performance available, and has some of the most modern architecture of one of these fringe devices I've ever seen. And given that it lives between six and eight bays, but at the same time arriving at a price point there that would flummox some of the very best alternative NASs out there, it's definitely the most unique and impressive NAS of the selection. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, click like. It genuinely helps me understand what I'm doing right in these videos. It makes each video better than the last. I can feel my voice starting to go. If you want to learn more, click subscribe or the bell to be notified. And of course, if you want to learn more or need help with your solution, use the free NAS Compare section below, linked in the description, where I can answer your questions or give free advice. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.